stress uh, of losing their loved ones. Also, I'm seeing the rate of uh, uh, fatals here in Cape Town. Uh, it, uh, I don't know what can we do uh, with the leadership of the Western Cape. As we were speaking yesterday, can, can you see that we have lost about six people in a day? It's all hurting. Uh, I'm suspecting that everyone uh, now is preaching this thing that everyone must be indoors. Um, everyone must have masks. There's not everyone you can buy, uh, but this, um, he your handkerchief, your scarf, if you don't have money, you must always put in. But this vagabonding is the one that is messing up. Uh, I'm suspecting now people, they must see how this uh, epidemic is, is very, very cruel. But today we're going to give it uh, to AG to present the, uh, the, the, their slides or whatever they are bringing to us. And then after that, we'll be giving uh, the minister uh, to give us a, a report on the 150 million funding for athletes. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting then uh, we'll be releasing the AG immediately that they've presented and the engagement with the uh, AG. Uh, with members. When during that, uh, you must not forget about the three minute rule in your in your question. Please prioritize it in order that we must have enough time in both uh, presentation. So I will ask um, those who are operating um, this Microsoft that they must assist me if honorable member is exceeding these three minutes, uh, you must switch off, even if it's myself. Now, I'm welcoming you, uh, hoping that uh, you all hearing what I'm saying. Uh, if you can take 10 minutes or 15 minutes of your executive summary to the members in order that members must have time uh, to ask questions. I thank you. Uh, good day, Chairperson. Yes. Um, Chairperson, yeah. um, yes. can I just uh, quickly submit an apology for um, Malomane? She will not be joining the meeting today. She submitted an apology, Chair. And then, Chair, the, that's it from my side, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Member. Uh, as I'm saying that, I was just welcoming you and the apologies. And, um, we are in and now, can I take it back to, to Nelly uh, to brief us? Nelly Morning, Chair. Uh, I'm back. Okay. Yes, Chair. Uh, Chair Pesson, you recall one. that we, the, the, the portfolio was in two, so I'm still with my other colleague, U Muhadim Masilik. I'll also ask her to just come into the video. So what I'll do, I'll oh. deal with the first part of the presentation, and she'll go deal with the last part of the presentation. I'll also ask her to just come in and introduce herself to the other members. Hey, I don't want that parliamentary stuff taking our air time. It's the one you said uh, we must make it that uh, 12 uh, to be off in the slot. 
But now what's going on? I've given you the chance to present to us, please. Okay, Chairperson. Yes, I'm here, Chairperson. I'm just gonna share the slides now. Okay. Yes, Chairperson. Go on. Yes. Yes, we're listening. Yeah. Can you please see the slides, Chairperson? Come again. Can you see the slides, Chairperson? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, Chairperson. Um, yes, we do see the slides. Okay. Um, you would know that we are here to present yes, um, our findings or the review on the APP, the Annual Performance Plan of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Yes. That was for the year 2020 and 2021, Chair. Yes. Firstly, I'll just like to bring in the accountability will. And this is also to just demonstrate where are we in the process. You would recall then when we do do some of our presentation, we'll highlight this part to say how important it is the accountability will. We are actually okay. right now the crucial uh, uh, stage of planning or starting to plan. Then this is just to make sure that all organizations do define their targets, they do plan in advance, they do do their budgets. So that's where we are in this accountability will stage um, uh, or will we are in right now, Chair. Uh, Chair, just the next slide is to just highlight the objectives of this review. Um, you would recall that a few years ago, most organizations would struggle with the measurability or the usefulness of their indicators and targets that are outlined in the annual performance plan. And we as an organization, we sort of started with this proactive review. So this um, review actually it aims to, to, to provide an early warning on concerns on measurability of indicators targets that are outlined in the annual performance plan. And this focus on the programs that are directly linked to the mandate of each department. To say, Chair, apologies, Chair? Yes, yes. Yes, the review, Chair, is not a detailed audit where we perform detailed procedures, but it's a high level review to also assist and identify where could be the key issues, that are, where key issues are in the planned indicators and targets of each organization. Okay, just to highlight what are the procedures or other uh, uh, issues that we did not look at here. Can you still see my screen share because it seems to have moved or it's missing? from my, from my uh, desktop. But to say, Chair, some of the procedures that we did not perform, this include the relevancy of indicators to the medium-term strategic framework, the completeness of indicators to cover all um, indicators that are in the medium-term strategic framework. Chair, the reason for this is that by the time we receive the draft APP from the department, this document was not yet finalized from the uh, National Treasury as yet. So the medium term strategic framework was not yet finalized. So those two procedures we could not perform, but we still continued to perform the other procedures that related to the measurability of indicators and targets. Some of the scope of the reviews of what we did chair is to review if the indicators are well-defined, the indicators are verifiable, Targets are specific, measurable, and time-bound, uh, Chair. Chair, this is the outcome of our review. So we've selected those three programs that we looked at, which is Program 2, Program 3, and Program 4. The first table, Chair, outlines the, uh, the, 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 the summary of, 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 of findings we had per program. You see Program 2, we said we identified three uh, indicators which did not or what were not uh, correctly planned out of the 14 and the total percentage is that. And the same thing with program three and the same thing with program four as well uh, per person. Chair, the second table which talks to the final draft. Now this is 
subsequent to us having done the review and discussing with management and management went back to, to correct. You'd see there's a slight change chair on the total number of indicators that, that then um, returned. Like you'd see in program two, initially we had 14 indicators. Now with the final draft, we're sitting with 12 indicators. So Chase, just to, to highlight that there were just a few of other indicators we identify issues on, and then management have subsequ subsequently have moved them to the operational plan. And that you'd see, that's why you see that the numbers have changed. But Chair, uh, subsequent to our review, only two um, indicators that were not adequately corrected, but I'll talk to it on what was outstanding on them, on program two. And then in program three, it was four indicators shared. I'll move on to the next slide. This just details some of the indicators that then now remain and what were the issues. But the key, the key critical issue with these indicators was that what management indicated was that some of them, they still needed to develop the standard operating procedures. So now those procedures that detail on how they plan to achieve it, how they plan you know, to just um, manage each indicator and hence why some of these indicators had remained to be um, not smart or not measurable or clearly defined uh, chairperson. Chair so we just think because we do not did not have the final um, standard operating procedures for those specific indicators, then therefore we're still saying they're not adequately addressed. But this could adequately be addressed based on how management and when management um, uh, develop those standard operating procedures. Chair, that concludes the first part of the presentation. I'll quickly ask Mohadi to go through the next presentation, which should be just one slide and a quick summary to it. Thank you. Okay, the next presentation. Um, thank you, uh, Honorable yes. Chair. Good morning to uh, the Honorable Members. Um, I'm just going to quickly take the committee through the um, status of records review. Yes. Can can we can we see the status of records review? So thank you, Nelly. Um, we did a, a a quick status of of records review for mostly up until uh, the two quarters, up until September. Let me just remind the committee what the status of records review is about. So we basically come as an auditor to look at um, the key areas that we normally audit when the annual reports are submitted. So we will go in and identify any concerns or any uh, issues that, my, that we might note from the financial statements, from the performance reports, which is your normally your quarterly submissions of uh, predetermined objectives, those targets uh, that Nelly has just touched on, and some of uh, and if anything is coming out of the compliance uh, uh, area. So what we do, we assess progress that the management has made in terms of their action plans that, we, that are normally developed based on either prior um, audit issues or based on uh, items that have come from the internal audit or audit com committee uh, or our previous engagements. So just a quick look at how uh, the, the outcome was done, which we discussed with management in the last quarter, but as I indicated, mostly covers two quarters. So we have both um, the departments. The good thing is that they don't have any area that uh, requires that significant uh, in intervention in terms of it being read. However, there were a few issues that were highlighted there in the arts and culture space where policies uh, uh, were not approved uh, uh, or, or, or on time, which will then uh, 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 inform the, 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 the procedures that they apply throughout the year. So they needed to look into that. And some of the issues identified in sports were basically the, because of the merger of the two departments, there were critical acting positions. We know that there will only be one uh, DG and CFO because the department will be now one in this financial period. However, the, fin uh, the, the audit or the financial period of 
1920, which ended on 31 March 2020, the, the, the department will be reporting separately. So the problem that was highlighted there in the sport is because the acting DG and CFO positions were not finalized as a year end. So it's, not, it's unclear uh, how the oversight over financials and the annual performance report preparations will be done when, when we come in for the audit. And there's, uh, in both departments, there's a bit of a risk of um, non-compliance in sports. There were just a couple of invoices that were paid late. And then in terms of monitoring of transfers in the arts and culture portfolio. And that, in, in a nutshell, was the, the status of records review results that we did. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, is it Nelly? Who's calling me? Mm, I was just indicating that we will take questions now with the presentation. Yes. Um, honorable members, uh, now this is the time that we must engage and uh, ask questions. Because um, I don't see anyone uh, who will ask the Say, Honorable Governor, yes. The head. Honorable Smith would okay. like to have a question, Chair. Yes. Honorable Ngabanete. Oh, yeah, I've started with you. We've said Ngabane and Honorable ah, CBC and who else? Who else? And I also have a question. question. Van Dijk. Van Dijk. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, Honorable Van Dijk. And then, and number four. Father, you can put me on, Che. Honorable Father. Thank you. Now, um, this is the first round, because uh, I don't know whether others, they, they are happy or they want to take on the second round. Sorry, Chair. Honorable Gaba. Yes. Uh, there's a tattoo mushroom shongo. And 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 that <laughs> Okay, honourable members, honourable Gabani, go on. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, greetings to the chairperson and uh, honourable members of the committee, Chair, as well as the team from uh, the AG's office. Chair, uh, one is going to start by welcoming the, the, the presentation, Chair. I only have one question, Chair, that I would love to ask. Um, I'm not sure whether it, um, the AG is going to be in a position to respond to it or is going to be the department that is responsible for this. Chair, the question is on the remaining findings, Chair. Chair, yes. the, presenter, the presenter here did indicate uh, that um, they are still awaiting for uh, a final standard operating procedure from the department for them to unpack how the target will be achieved. So that's why these findings are still remaining. So I just want to get an indication from a person who is in a position to respond to this question. What may be the impediments that uh, are delaying uh, the department to develop this final standard operating procedure uh, that is uh, going to adhere to the SMART principles? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Gabani. Honorable Sibi. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and greeting to all the honorable members and also the team from the AGs. Uh, I was also going to ask what uh, Honorable Nkabane has asked, but uh, nevertheless, I also have the concern about the issues of acting positions 
of DG, it, it seems as if it's not yet finalized. So one would like to know when are these uh, acting positions going to be finalized because they are costing a lot in the department. And secondly, the issue of non-compliance, what is the cause and how are they going to address it? Because compliance is, is very important. We are not going to have or we are not going to allow people who are supposed to comply and yet they don't want to comply. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, um, Honorable uh, Honorable Faber. Thank you, Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes, but hey, Thank man, you. I don't like it that I don't see Honorable Members. I don't know why. Why I'll, I'll no, you can on see me, Chairperson. You, can you I see can't. me, Chairperson? Chairperson forgot about me. I'm trying to be on, Chairperson. Um, go on, go on, please. I am on. Can you see me? No. Chairperson, I'm on. I can see myself beautifully on the screen. I look like a portrait. It's beautiful. No. I see you in the another screen, uh, which is not, uh, which I'm, I'm hanging. Yes, I, I see, please, my, I see myself. I, I, I unmuted and I, there I put the video off and there I put my video on. So my video is on, Che. Veronica, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Please ask your question. Please. Yes, yes, we can see you, Honorable yes. Papa. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, Chairperson, yes, my 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 understanding is that this is this is an annual performance plan review. Now, if we look at that and we look quickly on the page, I just want to get to the exact page. On page seven, at the bottom, it says findings were raised on some indicators which the department subsequently removed from the APP to the operational plan. We could therefore not verify if these were correctly or not. Now, I need to get clearance on that, please, Chair. Okay. Are you, are you done? I'm done. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Honorable uh, Mshongo? Hi, Chair. Fun day, Chair. Thank, thank, oh, thank you, Chair. I'm sorry, Honorable Fun day. Honorable Mshongo. I'm very sorry. I skipped thank Honorable Fun day. Thank you, I'm, Chair. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> Nobody there. Okay. Mr. Lidis, must I speak? Chair oh, no. person, must I speak? Yes. Chair, yes. Chair, my, my um, question relates to uh, page eight. Um, I want to know when will the standard procedures be developed and made available uh, by the management? Because in the second... Um, Presentation, and I also want to thank the AG. Uh, the, the report was uh, that was put forward to us, but on page uh, uh, twelve, it also says that five out of seven of these um, of these uh, uh, indicators they raise concerns. So, um, and it said that some of the indicators may not be measurable or un may be unmeasurable due to the lack of standard operating procedures. So it's very important that we. Um, find out when exactly will these procedures then be developed and made available by the management. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Chair. We welcome the presentation. I wanted to find out it's a concerning issue regarding a payment of invoice, the late payment of invoice. What is happening? Is the department doing something about it? This has been outstanding. Another question I wanted to find out regarding the AG recommendation. Are they implementing all recommendations from the previous year? Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you, Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Seattle. The next person is Honorable Siade. Honorable Knox. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me now? No, I do hear you. Okay. Thanks very much, Chairperson. 
And uh, I also want to join colleagues in welcoming the presentation from the, the AG. I have two questions. One is uh, because the AG's office is aware that the two departments are merged, in fact, from the presidency's view, do they still qualify them with the vacant positions, especially of DG and DDG, even if they know that in the near future they will be merging? My second question is, uh, what will be the AG's view if the department was to say we want to amend or withdraw the current submission in, in view of the pandemic, that is COVID-19, uh, COVID and what will be their uh, advice as a, as a way forward to the department? Thanks, Chair. <laughs> Thank you so much. I also want uh, to thank uh, the presentation, but Chair? I'm also <laughs> You've got uh, Mr. Mazingozi uh, waiting for to ask a question, Chair. Oh, it didn't indicate. Okay, Mr. Mazingozi. Honorable Mazingozi. Honorable Madlingozi, let me speak whilst he's try, trying to sort himself. Um, I'm also uh, wanted to check because other questions I'm suspecting it department to uh, answer us. Honorable, honorable Knox, mute is my unmute is mute is my please. Honorable Knox. May I speak? May I speak? Yes, Chairperson, you can speak. Sorry about that. No. Okay. I'm saying uh, I'm also having a concern of, of uh, the vacancies which are not yet um, occupied the staff, the, the very important uh, area of uh, DG and DDGs. Uh, when you are giving this, maybe the department, they are going to tell us why by this time uh, those um, vacancies are not yet filled. Uh, I don't want to to mix issues of uh, this uh, lockdown COVID-19, because since inception, uh, we were aware that they are going to fill the posts. What were the reason uh, when the department met with you not to fill these positions? Uh, I thank you, Honorable Martin Gose. Chabulile, assist Honorable Madrigozi. Um, honorable members, was Honorable Madrigozi still trying? Can I take it to the colleagues of AG to respond in these questions? Uh, honorable Madrigozi will take him in the second round if it is. And, uh, nearly and uh, Masekela, please answer the questions of the members. Okay, Chairperson. I'll yes. try and answer some, and I will yes. let Umukhadi answer some, especially the one that relates to the vacancies and stuff. But okay. I think on the first question that was asked by Honorable um, Nkabanye um, about the findings on uh, that are remaining, Yes, indeed. So what would happen, we'll get a first draft chair and we'll obviously review it and then come up with findings and recommendation. So depending on how management then receive them, then they will either tell us how um, they've adjusted on the APP. 
so that we resolve um, the finding or resolve the matter at that time. Or they will tell us to say, maybe currently they can't um, address the matter, then uh, let us know how then they continue and all of that. So with this specific ones, and I think it's majority of all those that we've listed that, uh, there is the fact that we were told that you no, know, because of the amount of activities and listings and everything that sits uh, with each indicator, so it's not uh, actually practical to put all that information in actual in the actual APP and the indicator description. So therefore, they say the standard operating procedure is likely to address. So the question of saying when do we then get the standard operating procedure, which also um, I think addresses one of the other honorable members' question. Um, I think that one would be the de department who will actually give the appropriate or the adequate answer on that one. But with that one, we said we cannot say it's fully resolved until we are sure if or us have, ourselves have seen the Senate operating procedures and hence why they would remain. But the timing of those documents, I think that will be the question that is the department can answer. And then um, I think uh, the question about the acting and the non-compliance, I'll leave for Umukhadi. And then there was another question about um, the other indicators that we said they were, were moved to the operational plan. And yes, indeed. So now you'd recall that our um, the purpose of the review is actually to look at the APP, which is then becomes the public document. Um, uh, not necessarily the operational plan. The operational plan, we do look at it for other uh, matters, but on this on this review, actually, we we're doing currently was specifically to just look at um, um, at the APP. So therefore, um, what we did, we were told that some indicators has been moved in between. So whether to what went to the APP was corrected or not corrected, we could not confirm that because that was not the scope of what we looked at at that particular time, you know, only of the APP. But I can confirm that there were a few indicators that the department have confirmed that they've assessed to be not so material to be tracked at an APP level. But as well, I think that's another question that can also be assisted or can be answered adequately by the department to say how then do they plan to monitor and follow up on those indicators that were subsequently removed from the uh, from the first draft that we reviewed. We were just highlighting that just so to show, um, you know, um, the, the balance of the numbers because initially we said they had 14 indicators, now we're talking of 12. We just wanted to highlight why the big movement between the two. Um, uh, I think there was another question, Chair, and then I'll ask maybe the member if I did not answer it correctly about the withdrawal of the APP on the advice. Maybe if I can just get a clarity on that question, because um, that one I was not quite sure. But I'll let Muhadi to answer the rest of the questions that then remain from the members' chair. Okay. Thanks, uh, Anil. Yes. Thank you, Honorable yes. Chairperson. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to answer the question on the acting positions. Um, how it came about, remember I did indicate that we do a status of records review. So we discussed it with my ma uh, management in January and it covered uh, two, uh, two first quarters. So the critical positions that we did highlight in the status of records was that of the acting DG and the acting CFO. And as the, um, uh, the members correctly uh, pointed out, because of this new merger, the, actually there's a freeze then on the position of DG and CFO because there's already a, a, a DG and a CFO in the arts and culture since the department are going to become one. However, I wanted to highlight why it is then critical. So the current acting DG and CFO of sport, their um, uh, positions, uh, their acting contracts actually came to an end in March. So the concern there was that the financial statements and the annual reports of sports will still have to be uh, prepared and presented separately to that of arts and culture because the, the merger is only effective as of 
1st of April. So we needed the department to actually start looking into bridging that gap to say what, what then is going to be the oversight that's going to be put in place to, for, for the preparation of still the separate uh, financial statement and the annual report for the sports. Because then the current DG and CFO of arts and culture were not involved in the activities of the 1920 financial year that came to an end on the 31st of March. So when we did discuss with uh, management, we do make that distinction to say, yes, there is certain positions like your CFO and DG that cannot uh, be frozen. However, that gap still needs to be accounted for because the financial statements will still have to be produced and, the, uh, a, 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 and an oversight and monitoring role will still have to happen. So the proposal on the table was to say those arrangements and those discussions need to actually take place with the minister and, 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 and the DG so that there is that uh, 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 provision made to fill that gap in terms of the financial statements and the annual reports being prepared under the correct uh, supervision of, 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 of uh, actually officials that were there for the financial period. So I hope that clarifies, okay. And then on the um, issue of uh, non-compliance and late payment of invoices. So as indicated in the status of records of review, so we basically go in and also check to say, in terms of compliance, are the, uh, is the department also paying their invoices on time, the 30 days rule and whatnot. So we, it was noted that a couple of payments in May um, of 2019 were paid late. So as indicated, the status of records review purpose is to then early warn the department to say there is this two payments now that have been paid late. Can we can the department then look into that and, and, and ensuring that um, for, for the duration of the year, special attention is then paid in terms of the the, the payments uh, being made timely. So that was uh, on that basis. Um, we did go back in quarter three because status of records covers covers a certain period as I, uh, I've already indicated. And indeed, the department does have action plans in terms of paying uh, the, um, the, the, the payments on time. I think in quarter three, the payment rate had improved to around about 97% uh, or so. And I think Nelly touched on the clearance on operation plans, but just to add there, the Another factor that we, we it came to our attention when we discussed the APP with the sports uh, chief director responsible for strategic planning, it was also decided that because of the two major of the department, certain targets also and, and indicators had to be prioritized because now they had to produce one APP that brought both arts and, and sports activities. And they found out some of them were a lot of... Um, uh, indicators. So they had to prioritize where some will be traced at APP level and then some will be traced uh, through the operation plans, which were also still being developed. And some, and then, then the standard operating procedures, which in also then uh, uh, will, will detail the forms and how um, information is going to be uh, collected on those targets will go about. So I wanted to add there. And I think I touched on the major uh, issue, I, I, I noted a question that said, do we still qualify the department in the acting positions? Um, we did make a distinction when we communicated the status of records review between the positions that were frozen, not because of the department, but because of the uh, uh, of, of the upcoming major, like we're saying, we're not saying that um, the DG and the position of the CFO must be appointed, we're saying the oversight, the acting might still be required because those were the ones pay, uh, playing that oversight role over the financial statements for the period. Um, however, there are uh, uh, there are positions then that we highlighted that those will, would have still been outstanding for the uh, majority of the year. But there's that uh, difference there. And I, I think that's that from my side. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Chairperson, I think there was another last yeah. question that I forgot to touch on. It was asked um, if all the recommendations of the AGSA have been implemented. 
I think if you look at from the APP review point of view, um, we can say that most, because subsequent to our reviews, some indicators actually um, were corrected and then therefore we could tick them to say, okay, we are comfortable with the planned um, indicator. But generally, if you look at the status of records review, like my colleague has said, to say, it is just a review to just look at how far or how, how are the records of each department looking like. And then you'd look at it in the art space, there were quite a number of issues that were raised in the previous year with regards to the grants that are issued to, 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 to the sector. And then one of the key root causes of that was the policy and the procedures that actually govern or actually um, addresses how then do they uh, approve, uh, well, receive, approve, and even uh, grant funding to, 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 to the artist. And then if you look at the status of records review, they've actually started implementing the recommendation we have. It's just that as at the time when we're doing that review at the end of quarter three, they hadn't actually finalized that policy or fully implemented the recommendation. So part of uh, the procedures we actually do uh, perform when we do the status of records reviewed to produce that honeycomb that we have in our presentation is actually to also see the action plans that have been put for each findings that were previously issued either in the previous year or in the most recent report that we have had. The person that concludes, I think, the uh, this round or answering all questions on this round, there was just one question we still needed clarity on from Honorable um, I think Knox that talked about um, a review or a withdrawal of the APP chair. Would like some clarity on that question again. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, colleagues. Honorable members, do you have any follow up questions? Honorable members, Achabunile, do you hear me? Uh, yes, Chair. I'm, I'm asking from honorable members that do they have follow up questions? Chairperson, no, we're fine. Can I come in, Chair? Yes, honorable members. Thank you, Chair. Honorable chair, I, I will, yes. yes I, will, I welcome the response, but I wanted to find out regarding the non-payment of invoice. This has been encouraged of both departments. Are there any consequence management in the coming year as we are managing these both, uh, both entities or both departments? What I wanted to find out exactly, another question that it is, the monitoring process of funds not used. It is clear that there's no consequence management, there's no monitoring process. And this is so uh, agent. I wanted to find out what mechanism can we find out from the AG for us as an oversight committee to monitor that aspect. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Shongo. Um, Honorable uh, Van Dijk. Mm. Honorable Van Dijk. Honorable Van Dijk. Yes, two person. I'm fine, Chairperson. Okay. No question. No. Thank you. Uh, le let me take this opportunity also uh, to, um, Chairperson. to that e department, I mean AG, e e DG, who's, who's calling me? Siabi. Oh, Honorable Siabi, just a, a half a minute. I um, also wanted to check whether the AG did get a report which we've been getting that the late payments are caused by the provincial uh, government or the provincial departments. Is it still the answer that you get from the department? Honorable Knox? Honorable Knox? Honorable Knox? Chairperson. Honorable Knox? Yes. Yes. No, I, I wanted to clarify my question because they said they didn't get it well. That uh, when departments were preparing their APPs, 
they were not aware of the pandemic. But in the midst of their preparations for APPs, this pandemic, COVID-19, came in. And it affected a number of programs. So my question was, uh, will it be a problem? And what would be the advice if the department was to say, we want to radically review our APP or alternatively withdraw our APP and redo it in light of the COVID-19 pandemic? Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> Unmute, Chair. Chair, you're on mute. Unmute. The person you are still on mute. Honorable. You are on mute, Chairperson. Unmute. Now you are fine. Yes. Oh, I was saying that uh, the colleagues from AG, can they take these three questions? Nelly? Chairperson, there's a lot yes. that we didn't get because you were in mute, Chair. <laughs> oh, I was saying... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the... I was saying that, can you respond on the three questions? Uh, maybe I don't know whether you did hear my question. I was doing a follow-up on what Honorable Mshongo was asking. I was also asking, saying that, um, did the department give you the answer that we've been getting about these 30 days payment? Because they've been telling us that the problem is it's our provinces that they don't submit in time or paying in time, and then it does make problem with the, the national department. So I'm saying yeah, those are three questions that uh, you must respond on. The first one from Honorable Mshongo, second one from Honorable um, Siabe and myself. Chairperson? I'll take the one on from Honorable uh, Siabi yes. about the, the impact of the now the COVID-19. Um, my understanding that the, yes. uh, the, the framework that actually governs how each department needs to plan their indicators and targets, it does outline that should there be specific changes in the mandate or specific critical changes in, in the department, whether budget constraints and other matters, which I would think COVID-19 actually falls within that. There is a process that each department actually can follow to then now go back and look at and amend the indicators and target. So my understanding and what I know is that if the process is followed in terms of that framework, then therefore it should be acceptable. Normally what it says is that it, it must be justifiable, and then there must be obviously reasonable grounds why they are now changing it, and it must be approved up until to the last level that um, actually the initial APP got approved, or if it's a parliament, so therefore even the amendments and the changes need to happen at that at level. So even from us, from our own perspective, we do follow what the framework actually says needs to happen. And then that's what, should it come to that with most department or even this department, will have to follow the process that's outlined there, Chair. Um, Mohadi will take on the late payments and the 30 days stories, Chair. Thank you. Uh, colleague Mohadi. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, in terms of the late payments, there the, the is two parts, as you noted. 
However, this one did not relate to the transfers and the late submissions of, of uh, performance information by the provincial department. Um, um, the provincial uh, department. In terms of that, normally the department, yes, it's able to, uh, within uh, the legislation, withhold uh, transfers until uh, the required documents are, are then submitted. Um, however, this these two instances noted related to normal suppliers, and the response that were, was noted there was due to um, CETA issues as well, uh, and, and and manual process ha having to to, uh, to to be processed. So this one did not uh, relate to necessarily the, uh, the, the 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 transfers to departments. And in terms of consequence management, I cannot necessarily say. Uh, too much into that because that's what um, uh, management looks into when they investigate in terms of root causes and what caused the, the late payments and then from there they determine the course of actions be it disciplinary and whatnot but normally uh, sports uh, response in terms of late payments we found to be adequate uh, 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 that such that it's not it, it doesn't it hasn't been yet that material that you would see it's been reported in, in into the uh, audit report or the management report because of the uh, of the response that they normally put in place. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, if there's no follow up, I'm suspecting now, let me take this opportunity to thank the office of AG hoping that when it department is coming um, <clears throat> this week, uh, will give us some other answers. Uh, with that note, honorable members, let's release uh, the AG and immediately get into the second presentation, uh, if you allow me to do that. Is it in order? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Supported chair. Uh, thank okay. you, chair. Thank, thank you so supported much. Chair. Uh, 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 thank you, chair. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you, chair. Uh, bye. Uh, may, may I check whether the, the 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 office, the department, it's here. I've heard <coughs> that uh, our deputy minister is with us. Is DG with <coughs> us? Is DG with us? Yes, I encourage from the department. Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me welcome uh, our our department. Uh, now, what we are going to do? Uh, we know that the department, the minister, is also part of what is going on. Every every day meeting with uh, the team that is looking after this COVID nineteen, but now we are getting to a very uh, crucial and 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 sensitive uh, part of our agenda. But I, I wanted to say we do welcome you, department. Uh, if you were not there uh, when we started. I welcome and I was I did share with the members that um, the legend who just passed on uh, we are sending uh, e condolences uh, to Oma Sugar Ray but with you department we are hoping that out of this 150 million that we want you to brief us about um, uh, will tell us and will envisage that if anything happened that uh, you don't have enough money uh, to to give to all uh, people who are deserving it you need to do an intervention as this committee will support uh, if we are saying that uh, you need more or you have a plan to meet halfway those who cannot get in this share of 150 million. We are not sure whether is it enough 
or will hear from you. By those words, I do welcome you, uh, Deputy Minister, DG, and whoever who's from the office. I don't know whether the minister is with us because the apology that I got, it's only one of Malomani that uh, the kid is sick. Uh, the kid is sick. So can I take this opportunity to give it to our department? <clears throat> Uh, Honorable the Deputy Minister, Honorable DG, you know how, how you are going to present uh, in this meeting. I'm giving chance to you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and uh, good morning to Honorable Members. Morning, morning. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we coming as the department okay. and the ministry from a, a position where we have been invited by the portfolio committee to come and brief on the uh, relief fund that the department has put in place. The DG will do the presentation, but I just wanted to give a background that as all of us know that uh, we are dealing with a pandemic, not only in South Africa, but throughout the world. And when the president um, <clears throat> made an pronouncements on how the country must manage the pandemic, one of the sectors that was badly affected was the sports sector and the creative sector. Because, as you know, the events that we deal with are gatherings and conducts. And because of that, then we couldn't have those events. And the people in these sectors were then badly affected. So the department, from uh, what then the, the, the president and the government has asked on that, each sector, each department must look at its stakeholders and see how it can assist. So the department looked at its programs and those programs that were supposed to take place this year, particularly up to June, national events and other programs. We took out those budgets and put them together to make sure that we have some relief fund that we can use. And that amount then came to 150 million. Now, that's the money that then we said we will use as a relief fund for both the athletes and the creative sector artists. So that's why we are here now. The DG then will take you through to the presentation to explain how we have done this and what we have done up to date and what is the status of that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, Honorable the Deputy Minister. Can I take it to you, DJ? Uh, okay. Good morning, uh, Honorable uh, Chair, Honorable Members, um, members of the media, uh, my <coughs> Deputy Minister, the, Mafu, the colleagues, um, I will make the presentation, and I hope that the honorable members have got the presentation. And uh, if it can be shared, it will be great. But if not, uh, the honorable members have the copy. Starting with the introduction, uh, following from what the deputy minister have indicated, um, I will just uh, go through the introduction. And after the introduction, I will just then go to the timelines of what we had to do as, as we set them, then the criteria and the eligibility thereof, and then I will uh, break down in terms of both the subsection of sport as well as the subsection of uh, arts and culture. So, Honorable Chair, when the COVID-19 came uh, to hit the world and uh, us not being spared, 
but also with the downgrades by the agencies who deal with ratings of countries' capacity to either pay their debt or be able to borrow. The country was already facing a technical recession at the time, and this could only worsen the country's situation and that we were facing. There was then a cabinet um, resolution that all clusters should convene immediately and respond as though we are facing a war. And that meant that we are dealing with uh, what has become known as invisible enemy, and that is COVID-19, which is coronavirus. So every sector then, after that, had to look at efforts and measures that we had to put in place uh, to provide relief, particularly on the social distress that the citizens would be faced with, either be workers, business, or ordinary citizens. Uh, given that then we could not gather or host any sporting events, as the deputies have indicated, there was a need due to the nature of our craft in our work to then look at measures that we can put in place to respond to pillar two of government's response. I'm saying pillar two because there were three main areas of focus when the national presidential uh, command, uh, COVID uh, uh, command council was established, <laughs> was to deal with first the response from the health perspective, containment measures. Second was then to deal with the issue of relief, social measures of social relief, uh, to deal with the distress that this pandemic had brought to the country. And uh, the third thing, of course, how to deal with the economic uh, recovery and the growth uh, in order to save the country from total collapse of economic activity. So pillar then two that deals with uh, social relief of distress, uh, uh what the department had to respond to. However, just to share briefly, Chair, because uh, uh, while I might not have uh, sent this information to you because of time, but I just need to give a context of the importance and the role of creative sector. Just briefly, if you allow me to indulge, uh, Chair, because when this pandemic came, we had uh, finalized the mapping study that was indicating the impact of creative cultural industries in the country through our observe, or SACO, which is the research arm. In that research, it was indicating that between 2016 and 2018, the cultural creative industries was contributing 1.7% to the country's GDP. And that translates to about 74.4 billion rands. If you were to look at the multiplier effect of that, because we'll have what we call direct and indirect contribution of the sect, uh, you will then look at it from the perspective of about 5.6% of the GDP, translating to about 141.8 billion rents. In relation to the job creation, just on direct jobs, this industry at the time of the 2018 end was creating 0.57 percent of jobs which is translated to 92 92163 and then those who are employed in the creative occupation and other industries at 355 718 jobs and if you look at then those jobs that support um the industries uh, was at our 688,000. So in a total landscape of job creation in the country, direct and indirect, this sector has a significant contribution of about 1.1 million jobs. So we then asked that our research arm based on COVID, can they assist us to just check what has been the impact of COVID, particularly in these two areas? I will come to the issue of support, Honorable Chair. So this report is not yet published, but is what they have just 
analyzed uh, on the impact that they have conducted when COVID started on the sector. Now, they conducted this research and they gave me this report on Saturday. They are about to publish it once they present to us, possibly during the course of this week. But at a high level, is that people who are just on employment characteristics of the sector that are extremely vulnerable. 46% of people working in this sector of cultural occupations are in fact in the informal sector. And a much higher proportion of cultural workers are also regarded as own account workers with no employees. These people are frequently called freelance and that they are at about 34% and non-cultural workers at 10%. So the results that came recently after getting about 600 responses on the impact of COVID-19. Briefly is to say, of these uh, responses, 95% of respondents were reporting that they have experienced cancellation or indefinite postponement of their work. And that work was to take place during the course of this year. Only about 11% of businesses and freelancers said they could probably continue with 60% of more of their normal business activities. While 45% said they Point of order, couldn't chair. continue at all. Point of order, Chair. Yes, Point of order. Chairperson, yes. I don't want to uh, disrespect you, but I follow. We have received a presentation. We're getting a new presentation verbally. Yes. I, I, I cannot follow. Can you? I, I, it's uncalled for because I have a presentation with me, but you are getting a verbal presentation, which is it shows that the department now, they are now speaking about creative industry. Now, why now? The presentation that we have, it's quiet about uh, the creative industry. Now, I'm calling order. Can the DG go back to the presentation that we have been given? Thank you, Chair. Uh, noted that, uh, DG, do you want to say something? Did no, Chair. Um, um, I will proceed as indicated. I did ask uh, at the beginning just to yes, give yes. the context. Uh, however, we will uh, provide the, 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 the control committee with this. I indicated, remember, Chair, that the meeting was brought forward. We were going to make sure you get this, and I received it only uh, on Saturday, as I indicated. But it's not a problem. It's just to look at the impact. Uh, it's important to do use scientific studies. And that is why we had commissioned this. But as the honorable member has indicated, may I oblige uh, honorable chair. So Thank continue you, that the presentation. Is that then on yes. the recommendation of the sector, the minister announced the 150 million rent relief fund for the sector to assist clients, artists, technical personnel, and core ecosystem of the objective, with the objective that we ameliorate, reduce, or just contribute to softening the blow. Following the announcement then, the department had to put together a two-pronged process, one that would focus on sport practitioners and another focusing on creative and cultural industries. These processes were then set in motion, commencing with the sport processes being alongside, coordinated with the SASCOC, South African Sport Confederation and Olympic Committee, while on the side of the arts and culture process was being coordinated uh, with the engagement and consultation of the industry bodies. A number of instruments had to be developed, uh, Honorable Chair, to make sure that the process is guided properly. And we then formulated those, and uh, those were going to talk about eligibility, the criteria, the duration, the application form, and all these things had to be put in place to make sure that people are able to apply. And we used various platforms, 
for that purpose. Registered businesses and their employees were not eligible to apply for this relief. They have an option of exploring other relief interventions available to business and provision of also false information. We clearly stated that uh, that risk is high and people must be forewarned that it might be liable for prosecution if there is fraudulent attempt to access the relief fund. So the timelines, honorable chair and honorable members, then is really just a breakdown of that process. From the 16th of the date of the pronouncement, which was 16th of March, we then indicate, if, if I have to read, chair, would be that uh, the announcement of state of disaster is made. The 17th minister um, <coughs> consultative meetings with the separate structures in the sector. First, he met with the creative industry bodies, and then thereafter, he met with the sports bodies on the same day, on the 17th. Then, unbeknown to us, looking at the escalation of disaster, 23rd of March, there was then a lockdown that was pronounced by the president. And <coughs> that was going to start on the 27th of March. In this regard, minister had to put up measures in place to deal with the implications and ramifications of this. And that was on the 25th, when then minister committed the 150 million rand after at, uh, directing the department to find money that can assist. And this money was mainly based on particularly projects that were going to be canceled and the programs were going to have between March and end of June. End of June was informed by the fact that state of disaster is a 90-day period. So there was an anticipation that things are going to happen. And, and maybe by end of June, things might be better. So we had to look for the budget which would be impacted upon by this uh, lockdown, I mean, a state of disaster. We then created the relief framework uh, that we have uh, indicated. Then on the second, we called for the applications uh, that was released, and the applications closed on the sixth. And then there was also parallel to that a need to have a um, ability to allow creatives to continue with their craft, and uh, that was then conceptualized under the concept of no audiences, and therefore maybe live streaming and digital platforms could be utilized. And therefore we had then also an, an tender process that was advertised to merely focus on how can those artists or creatives who want to then, and even the sportsmen and women who want to utilize digital space to be able to be assisted <clears throat> that closed on the 9th of May. Then the adjudication of applications and finalization of adjudication committee first report for sport applications uh, occurred on the 14th, between the 14th and the 20th of May. 21st, provisionally approved and conditionally declined applications for the sport sector were returned to federations for further processing and resubmission when need of additional information was required. The disbursement of funds then began on the 23rd for those who have been successful from the side of the sport. And at the time, we started with the 93 um, <coughs> who received a relief fund of our 20,000 rand. We were using Sport Trust as our disbursement institution. On the 25th, the calls that were paid included the South African Sport for Physically Disabled, surfing, triathlon, netball, gymnastics, golf, fencing, and canoeing. By the 27th, all outstanding sport applications were received. And again, adjudication committee started 
to work on. Applications captured and spreadsheets uh, were prepared for re-adjudication between the 28th and 29th, and this then resulted in the results that we will outline later. Now, the 30th to the 20, uh, 30th of April, sport adjudication panel reconvened, and they looked at the balance of the 149, while for arts and culture, 105 arts and culture applicants were recommended at the time for payment. And the adjudication process then had already seen more than 1,000 out of the 5,000 or so applications and or emails that we had at the time. From the 1,000 applications, 105 were then approved and processed for payment. Department then released a statement to give an update. And the next steps were that payment of balance of successful sport applicants and collating of outstanding information on provisional applications and further payments would be then made. The regret letters had to be sent to inform those who were unsuccessful. And payment of recommended application for arts and culture final report of education panels. Then there will be a close out of report. So, Chair, in terms of the timelines, that is how we have tried to address the matter. The question was who qualifies and what is the eligibility criteria? We had to put together the relief fund uh, in terms of the applicants whose activities, whether sport, arts, or culture, were going to be cancelled. And when we dealt with the issue of postponements, it was that then those ones might be seen maybe because at a later stage, due to the fact that those might not have been permanent cancellations, but postponements and relief will still be available should the state of disaster and COVID uh, conditions improve. So then these are people who were financially impacted upon, they were going to make their earnings and they couldn't, and that therefore would include practitioners within the creative space, athletes, coaches, technical personnel. Now, coming to what has happened in relation to sports as part one. These were the rules of the game, uh, pardon the pun. Eligible to apply are athletes, coaches, and technical personnel who directly, uh, their life, in fact, depend on the earnings of the sport. So the technical personnel are those who must support them, who support those athletes. So we included them. The applicants were to then complete the form, and this form was for eligibility of COVID-19. Applications must be sent to the federations, national federations. We will note, Chair, that, uh, Honorable Chair, that the federations uh, the, in the sport are well organized and therefore are easier to work with than to work with individuals and a plethora of applications to coordinate this process. Then no applications will be entertained if not sent through a national federation. Because also the federation has a wealth of knowledge about what's happening in their codes. So it was important to rely on them. Only applicants that meet the criteria set above will apply. What were the rules? Only applicants affected by an event that has been canceled for the period 16th of March to the end of June. Incomplete forms shall result in immediate disqualification. Registered business and employees may not qualify for this relief. They may explore other relief interventions. Provisioning of providing false information would be treated as fraud and dealt with through appropriate criminal justice system. And the deadline was the 6th of May. Honorable Chair, what was the role of the federations? 
they needed to identify a person to coordinate the process, in other words, manage the applications and compile them and then forward them to the department. Disseminate application forms, receive them, check and verify completeness, validate and authenticate the information provided, send applications and supporting documents electronically to the department. The panel was then established and the panel of independent adjudicators, not necessarily with the department officials. And this came from SASCOC, National Lotteries Commission, CASITA, New Live Life, the Sports Trust, and Sport for Social Change Network. These members were recommended on the basis that they operated a macro level of sport and recreation. They were unlikely to have vested interest in the application submitted. Some, if not most of them, deal with the management of applications for funds or support in their line of work. They will work and or collaborate with the department as part of their operations. The department had to provide what we call administrative support. The process of adjudication was that then the panel finalized the first sitting on the 14th, as I indicated earlier on the timelines, and they considered applications in four categories. There were those that were approved. There were those that were regarded as provisionally approved. For example, where the application, everything else is there, but the signature is missing. Declined with recommendations. In other words, something there that um, they are saying, if the, some documents are made available, they might be able to reconsider. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you did you try to yes, summarize? Because mem members, they need to uh, ask questions try to sum up uh, at half past uh, I'll be giving to the members please DJ. thank you yes. slide 13 or page 13 it will indicate then uh, the details of our applications uh, the honorable members have got that I will not go into detail but just in terms of status of adjudication 473 applications in total they were then received from 25 federations and then the panel reconvened on the 30th and that's where they had the breakdown then totally 292 successful, 198 were males and 23 females. And then, of course, 16 were conditionally approved, eligible documents missing and banking details. 165 were declined primarily for not meeting the said criteria. Quality assurance is still taking place in relation to 165 to ensure that there are no erroneous declines. So, Chair. Then on the disbursement of funds, um, the, in fact, now uh, over and above the 93, uh, those disbursement of funds is continuing and should be finalized. Um, uh, I don't just don't have the status as of today, but there was a finalization of all payments if the banking details and the accounts are found to be correct. But that is what uh, is being done. And then the decline letters to applicants being sent via federations. Now, on the issue of the side of sport, arts, and culture, I may not repeat then the criteria because it's well known, but it's just to indicate that uh, those will be practitioners and general personnel who are directly affected by lockdown, those who will complete the form uh, completely, uh, but also those who uh, events had been cancelled and they were to submit the applications through the emails and only applicants that meet the criteria will do that. We appointed independent adjudicators and then that was uh, on the 9th of April and they have been then sitting and they are a panel of 15 uh, divided in the into groups of three each and therefore we had five of those. But uh, due to the high application and numbers, we have now increased this personnel uh, to make sure that we get people who will also adjudicate. The adjudication process started on the 27th, 
of May of April. And then we have also, we received a, a total of about 6,000 emails. Uh, but these were emails for this COVID relief fund, which others were asking, um, seeking clarities and non necessary applications. Others were just applications that uh, had nothing to do with the, the, the COVID people were just sending in, and therefore then we had to sift and clean. But also there were too many other people, one person sending multiple uh, documents on the same email, whether it's attachments mm -hmm. after sending the application. So there were those challenges, Chair. So to date then, what we have um, been able to say has been seen by all judges and confirmed is 1,050 applications that have adjudicated. And of these 603 applications were rejected, 232 recommended, and the payment of as uh, applicants have been uh, uh, have started on the 2nd of May. We are using both uh, um, Sport Trust, but now we have also then been allowed to utilize PASA to make those payments. Honorable Chair, I think then I don't have to waste time. Uh, the rest of the document is just uh, what we needed to put in place as risk adjustment strategy and mitigation to minimize the negative impact. Honorable Chair, I think uh, allow me then to, to end there. Uh, uh. Thank you, DG. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, you can intervene on so, ma so many rejection uh, of appeals as a department. Uh, you may have two interventions, I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, if so many rejections, uh, you need to chip in. Honorable members, now is the time that uh, you must uh, take this presentation and scrutinize and ask clarifications and questions. Uh, to you, honorable members. Mama Mama Bulo. Mama Who else? Mama Who else? Who else? Van Dijk. Faber, please. Faber. Van Dijk. Van Dijk. Faber, please. Who else? Faber, please. Adams. Faber, do you have me? Possible to leave. Possible please. Listen, Honorable Mamma Bulo, Honorable Mshongo, Honorable Fandek, Honorable Fiber, Honorable Adam. Honorable Ngosil Tool, Honorable Sieve, Honorable Gaban, in that order. You must not forget the rule of three minutes each. Honorable Mamabulo. Honorable Mamabulo. Hello? Yeah, Chairperson in Kalabora, Mayor Beauty Dulani. Let me firstly acknowledge uh, and welcome the um, presentation from the DG. DG, I've got a uh, quick two questions here. I can see that the application process has started on the 4th uh, to the 6th of April. Uh, it only took two days. You appointed the adjudication committee on the 9th. My question is, uh, are you aware that uh, um, the likes of um, Isibaya and, uh, and Gomorrah have been taken off air? I'm trying to check if uh, um, its actors um, are eligible to apply for what you call for the relief fund. Because I know that these people are freelancers and most of them are struggling. They don't even uh, get subsidies for medical aids from their productions. 
are they applying as individuals if they qualify or um are they applying through their productions like you are bomb Ferguson, Riti, and so on so that is my first question sure. the second Bye. question because the second question, DJ, because now you are the DG for for the entire department, sports, arts, and culture. I want to ask about the resumption of the PSL games because we can't just give uh, give that title. Um, it was contested. <laughs> I'm trying to check um, if you did speak to PSL and staff regarding the resumption or the preservation of the resumption of the PSL games because right. those players can be tested for maybe seven days before the games, they can also get screened and be taken to the field. So that we get to the bottom of the issue. Thank you very much, uh, DG and Chairperson in May, Beatrice Dulagi. Thank you. Thank you. We are an example. We didn't even finish your three minutes. The next person, Honorable Trongo. Thank you, Chair. We welcome the presentation. Chair, I wanted to find out, was it deliberate for the department to open this application for two days? Was it deliberately done? And was it deliberately that they must not include on the criteria the creative industry? And I wanted to find out, can the DG confirm that they only appointed the panel on the 9th of April? Because according to the media statement that we've received, it was on the 23rd of April. Please, can you confirm that? Another issue, I think we've received, obviously, a confirmation from one of our artists that the form was the application form was not uh, it was not easy for them to fill the application form was it deliberately done for us to make sure that the gaps between people applying for the benefit one of the questions that i wanted to find out uh, regarding the panel i believe there were conflict of interest because one of the beneficiary was sports trust and obviously one of the panelists is a member from sport trust can i get an explanation what mechanism or what criteria was done to appoint the panelist? Another issue that I wanted to find out regarding the payment, uh, Minister, can can or can the DG provide the list of applicant, like people who've benefited, people who are rejected, can we have their names? People who are benefited, who are rejected, who are approved? I think we must get those names. Another issue that I wanted to find out, the issues of a formula. How did you come about to give an, an artist or an athlete to 20 million? Can you give us a formula? What formula, what did you use for you to get to 20 million? Another issue, I think there's an issue of duplication of uh, double uh, dipping, so to say, because Guazulu Natal has the same uh, opportunity for people to uh, apply for funding plus minus seven million has been uh, put forward technician artist uh, any sportsman must come forward now i think there's there will be a double dipping of of uh, application or people will uh, benefit twice another question that i wanted to find out can you give us the names of the people that are going to take care of the application whereby if people are, are appeal I think there's an appeal committee. Who are the individuals appointed for the appeal committee and the composition thereof? I wanted to find out above all, Chair. Uh, you know, it was directly that the DG, why did the DG give us a verbal uh, presentation today regarding the industry, uh, creative arts? What was the reason? for us not to get the presentation that we've been given because I think our people are crying that, for an example, the creating arts were not included in this uh, relief fund. Another question, are we going time to off. have a section? Ta a time off, honorable. Time off. Thank you, time off. Time off. Thank you. The next uh, honorable members, honorable fund Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. My first question is definitely why the uh, time frame for people to apply? Why is it such a short period? The first date was uh, Thursday 2 April till uh, Monday 6 April. It was over a weekend, so it would leave three working days for people to apply. It was locked down stage five, so people um, didn't have the opportunity um, to get to the internet um, um, and the facilities, the printers. Um, uh, um, so then... Um, 
the, yesterday the minister said that uh, from the, um, the, it will be extended from 4 to 6 May, and we welcome that. But again, um, what happened yesterday is all the emails were blocked. So um, there was also late evening, there was no uh, uh, application form on, on the website. So it, uh, again, another day has been wasted. So it leaves the applicants with only two days. And I don't think um, it's a bit fair uh, time frame for people that's um, been in lockdown uh, uh, situation to um, be able to, if, if that it's a fair uh, time frame. So I would like to get uh, the reason why there's such a cold, uh, Specifically, if you think that only 232 people out of 1,050 has been approved uh, for funding in the creative sector, that's only 22%. Clearly, there must be an extended period for our for funding. That is my one um, question. Then also, um, I've specifically written uh, to the minister to ask on um, the criteria and uh, received um, now also from the DJ uh, will be uh, um, uh, considered. But will that only be people that um, are um, uh, related or working or um, have been with the department, or will that be in general um, be applicable to all artists in South Africa? I also, in yesterday's um, uh, media statement, the minister says that especially from disadvantaged communities, they will be receiving funding. So my question in my letter was also to the minister: Will the BEE criteria um, uh, also be applicable when funding um, is made available for for artists? And another question that also arose was also um, the minister also said that um, the department had a, 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 a there was a, a that department allows for artists to stream live and that the SABC will be asked to um, also um, be, get involved. Now, with regards to this, um, I want to know how much of the funding because the minister said that. Part of the funding um, was open to proposals for live stream. How will this work? The, the actors or the, the artists, they need funding now. And so if they stream, what is the logistics uh, involved with this? And um, the minister must also explain to us, it's a, a, this sector is not an essential service. So how are they going to um, actually apply to this proposal? or uh, put it in a working um, uh, state. Thank you. Your time has expired. Your time expired. The next, uh, thank you, Honorable Van Dijk. Honorable Faba. Honorable Faba. Honorable thank Faba. You. I'm thank the you. chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. Yes, I do. Thanks for the presentation as well. I would just like to know why the department created the Judicational Panel, um, who might have a conflict of interest. Um, I think Honorable Seth already elaborated on that. Um, I would like to know why this panel was not established from this 25 sport federation, since I see there's an extra body again that was created. I, I don't understand it. Um, so, sorry, Honorable Chair. Uh, we yeah. can't hear at all, Honorable Faber. Another so, uh, is our staff must uh, attend on that. I do hear. Okay, so so my question is that, uh, as Honorable Temple already said as well, why was such an educational panel um, created with people um, and organisations that can have a conflict of interest? And my, my, the real ask question is why well, this panel was not rather well established from the 25 sport federations, as these federations know exactly who are affected um, in any case, and they're going to have to approve it, as uh, they know exactly yeah. who these people are that's losing. No, um, your line is not clear. Chairperson, oh. I, I don't know how to get more clearer. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, continue. Okay, I, I'm putting my face almost into the iPad at this moment. I hope you guys are not scared to see my face so close. Um, I'll rather put the video off then. My question is, why was this panel then not rather than just established from the 25 sport federations? The federations know exactly who is affected chairperson. 
Um, and the rest was already asked by previous members, so I would not duplicate questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Pastor. Adams. Yes. Thank you. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Yes, thank you. Greetings to all and thank you for the presentation, DJ. My question is also about that uh, short time for the applications. I see that it, it did start from the 2nd of March, uh, of, of April, and the closing date was on the 6th. So it was only four days for them to apply. Um, some of those who are in the rural areas they have the challenges of resources like emails and signatures, the forms that they receive. They couldn't print it because it was during the lock time uh, uh, period. So um, the indication there was uh, that some of, of those who did qualify did receive the communications, but those who didn't who apply but did not yet receive anything like for instance if they can say uh, communicated to them that no you didn't qualify or we are still in the process of that um, so it, it the, the most challenging thing was the communication and the resources of those who apply thank you thank you honorable uh, adams um the parliament must sort uh, the screen. Oh, Honourable Fab, I still there. Uh, oh, Honourable Adams was not shown. Uh, thank you, Honourable Adams. Uh, Honourable Ngozi Lutuli. Ngozi Lutuli. Honourable Ngozi Lutuli. Thank you, Chair. First of all, Thank you, Chair. Yes. Can you hear me? I do. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with the, the one thing to we as a, an IFP were fully supportive of the High Court decision against uh, Sikaka. This case was an introduction that we still have a long way to go as a South African, hence apartheid has not yet ended. Uh, my question is that uh, to the DG, uh, what, are the, what are the measures in place for for the rural areas, for that, uh, for that, uh, for that, uh, it looks for that. Uh, what we were talking about this money which were given to the to people, and then secondly, I would like to know who can assist them out of out of the very difficult forms to to be filled in. Because already what we have already been disadvantaged for a long time, so really I don't believe that uh, without any assistance from the department, so that the people in the traditional authorities areas would be given a chance to 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 fill the forms. Only that uh, I'm, 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 I, I want to raise. Sure, sure. Thank, you. thank you so thank thank you honorable Tuli. the next person on the list is uh, honorable siabe no thank you chairperson honorable siabe <laughs> yes uh, am i audible oh, you are taking yes honorable gabane yes chair one chairperson is going to take this opportunity and comment uh, the department for uh, good work done in ensuring that our sports, arts and culture sectors are taken care of during this uh, very difficult period, chairperson. Uh, their interventions and initiatives, chair, 
can never be can never go unnoticed to Chaperson. They are doing a very good work, Chair. Chaperson, my first question Chair, is on slide eleven. No, slide ten, Chair. On okay. adjudication panel. On adjudication panel, Chair. Um, Chair, yeah. my 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 question the DG did indicate that um, the panel was uh, then appointed from uh, various institutions. Uh, they then decided to take people from external, not uh, from the department chair. Uh, so chair, what I want to get is that what is the criteria that was used to appoint people from these different institutions? And what measures that they have put in place to ensure that to ensure that um, the system or the processes or the adjudication processes they are not prone to uh, manipulation by this panel that has been appointed? What mechanisms or measures or stringent measures that they've put in place to ensure that it is not prone to manipulation? Second, we say is that. Um, as far as uh, the disadvantaged communities is concerned, what mechanism that they have put in place to ensure that the fund is also is also accessible and benefited the disadvantaged communities from the remote areas? Chair, the last one the methodology that is employed by the department to provide feedback to the applicants for declined sports applications because the they are the regret letters are sent to those who were unsuccessful. What is the methodology that they are employing to provide feedback to those that were unsuccessful? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would love to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, welcome the, the presentation uh, from the DG and uh, love to greet everyone. Uh, this department is forever planning and is forever checking things, uh, acting, and, and, and therefore there, there, there's a lot of accountability that is being um, left, you know, to be done. And uh, look, as far as, as we can see that the nation and the state is definitely not supporting the culture and it is killing it. We cannot have our minister uh, to plead uh, from the DJs and the music compilers to do what uh, is supposed to be done by uh, South African uh, you know, media, which is supporting South African music. Uh, as, far, as far as you can see, there is no solidarity and triumph for South African artists today. The sector is the hardest hit by this invisible killer called COVID-19. And with all the social distancing, artists cannot make a living. They cannot uh, have any income. Uh, why is the department dragging its feet to speedily pay artists that the money that the president of South Africa has promised? And if there are any artists who have been given money, uh, whom the department calls successful uh, applicants, who are they? And uh, because everyone is, is, is trying for money left, right, and center, but who are these ones who have, who have been paid? And how did they got to be paid so quick? Not all artists are celebrities. There are thousands of artists of all kinds, like actors, uh, people behind the scenes, uh, you know, DJs, uh, painters, who, who are who who have nothing you know on their end and, and they're on the verge of committing suicide and they are very depressed. Uh, who is going to pay for their children's school fees? Who is going to pay for their bonds? Who's going to pay for their cars? Who's going to buy them food? Why is this uh, taking too long to help uh, the young black artists uh, of all kinds here in South Africa? And and why are they subjected to such disdain? Please, please, uh, DG the department and all, give the artist the money that is due to them. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Madlingos, Honorable Siabe. 
Thanks very much, Chair. Um, I just want to welcome the presentation from the department. I think it's well understood. My first question would be, are they, or is the adjudication committee um, where the members of the adjudication committee volunteering their services or were they paid some stipend out of the 150 million? Two, from the report, it seems the previously disadvantaged uh, applicants uh, mostly had it. How is the department going to intervene to make sure that uh, the public does not necessarily see the previously advantaged having benefited at the expense of previously disadvantaged? And can the department clarify the extension of application due date as uh, expressed yesterday in the media briefing by the by the minister? And uh, if possible, DG, can you just tell whether at this level, level four of COVID, uh, of the lockdown, are uh, artists allowed back to work? Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you. On, thank you, Honorable Siabe. Can I uh, give back these uh, discussions Honorable the Deputy Minister, Honorable the DG. Honorable Deputy Minister. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, members, for, for the questions. Uh, and also, some of the questions were more of assisting the department on how to move forward. I just wanted first to... To, to, to talk to what the chair spoke before handing over, because she spoke about the rejections. Uh, just to say, we also note the high number of the rejections, 603 to date, from the, the creative sector. And to say that one of the things that we, we, we have done is as the rejection goes through to the person, because remember, this relief fund is for the individual artist and, 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 and creators. It's not for companies. So as the rejection go through, and this, this answer will also deal with Umemba Unkaban, it goes with a form of appeal. Because our understanding is that some of the rejections might be minor mistakes. So that appeal form, the, the person when she gets or he gets the rejection letter, he then fills that appeal form and sends it back. That appeal form must be filled within five days because our understanding is that we wanted to deal with this process as soon as, as, as fast as possible. And the appeal committee, because somebody else asked about the appeal committee, let me pitch on that as well. The appeal committee is, a, is just a, three members, three people that are forming that committee. It's uh, Ms. Nageti Ribane, it's Steve Kekana, and Sbongile Nzimande. The reason why it's those three, it's simply because they all have got legal background, but they are also in the creative space. So they, so they would be. They are not just legal people who are not practicing in this in this creative space. So, so they are familiar with the creative space. That's why uh, we are, we agreed on those three. So that process is going concurrently, as the adjudicators are busy, and as they reject, then they go to the appeal team, so that the appeal team can also look at those that are rejected and see if they cannot go back to the pool and make sure that they get approved. We, we also, I also wanted to answer uh, Honorable Mshongo. I don't know where Honorable Mshongo gets the 20 million. There is no 20 million per artist or per athlete. It's actually 20,000 rand, Honorable Mshongo. Remove those zeros. I don't know where you get the 20 million. It's 20,000 rands. Because remember, if we had to give each artist or each athlete 20 million out of this 150 million, how many were we going to reach out to? 
the idea here is that we are not paying salaries or we are not refunding people that have lost an income. We are doing a relief, a relief in such a way that we reach out to as many athletes and artists as possible. So the amount is 20,000 rents, which is the ceiling. So even if you send, you send us an application that says you have lost 300,000, we can't give you 300,000. We can pay you up to 20,000 rand so that at least you are able to do certain things right now to relieve your state's your situation in terms of food, rent, and other things. So the money is 20,000 rand. Um, and, and on the issue of the double dipping, the minister had a meeting with the MECs. The process that is going on in provinces is the process that is agreed upon by the department, by the MECs and the minister, because our understanding was that as we had put money together from the events that are not going to take place at national level. The same thing is happening at provincial level. There would have been programs and events that would have taken place between uh, April and June. So we then asked them to put that money together. Our understanding was that there will be those artists and athletes that don't have the national reach that wouldn't be able to apply at national level, but can, all, can then apply at the provinces, so that those that are missed out at national level are being looked at at provincial level. But we agreed as well that there will be a possibility of double dipping. And we agreed that we will share lists and notes, both the provinces and the national department, so that we are able to see nobody gets benefit from national and province at the same time. So I thought it's important that that is clarified. But also, we, I want to agree with all the members that say the time was very short. Remember, when the DG was doing the presentation, this relief was done within the context of the national disaster, which is 90 days. So we were working within the 90 days of the national disaster where then we had to make sure that we put the, the advert out there, we are able to deal with the applications, we put adjudicators, and we pay the, the artists and the athletes. And we felt that to do this within the 90 days, we need to be agile and move very fast. But we agree with the members that the COVID-19 pandemic is not going to take 90 days. It is, the effect is going to be longer than that. Therefore, the department needs to go back to the drawing board and look at how then we move forward to make sure that even those that did not have the opportunity to apply, how then do we make sure that we, 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 we accommodate them? That's why tomorrow the, the, the minister and the deputy minister will be meeting with the stakeholders of the creative sector. Remember, the, 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 the report says, the presentation says, Minister met them on the 17th. So we are going to meet them tomorrow so that as we map the way forward, we actually have a discussion with them and they give us advice and they agree on how to move forward. So yes, there will be that possibility that we will be able to even accommodate those that missed out on this thing. Two days, four days was very short. We all agree on that. But if you look at the volume of the applications that we received, even within that short space of time, which was 6,000 applications, it then helps us to actually say, in, then in this period, let's deal with that. We have only, the adjudicators have only looked at 1,050 applications as of two days ago of the artists and the creative industry. And out of that 1050, 603 were rejected or not recommended, and 232 have been recommended. That's, that number is, is too big, those that have been uh, not recommended. So that we have a meeting tomorrow. I'm not sure about uh, the, 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 the report that says, or the questions that says, 
minister said yesterday, there's an extension from 4th to 6th May. Maybe DG will clarify that. I'm not aware of the extension yet. We are discussing the issue of a possible extension after we had discussed with the stakeholders. We have not put out a date yet of the extension. Maybe I'm, I'm missing that, but DG will clarify that part. Because I heard uh, Honorable Fandik says yesterday people tried to apply and they couldn't get through to the system. And already a day is lost and now there's few days left. We, did you will come in on that one? Because as far as I know, the dates we have not confirmed yet. But we were just saying yesterday, we agree. Though that first fight, those days were very short. We need to look at making sure that we accommodate as many as possible, particularly those from the disadvantage. So I thought it's, import it's important for me to just to clarify those, so that when DG comes in then and get to the details, that part is clarified. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank, you th thank you very much, DM. DG? DG? Yes, Honorable Chair. Okay. I think uh, the the Honourable uh, Deputy Minister have covered all the questions there, very, very straight to the point. But, uh, okay, let me start with the uh, questions from Isaiah, Komora, the actors and the struggle that they are facing. Yes, we, we, we accept that there is a challenge. In fact, um, there were two levels of uh, uh, approaches to the department here. One, you will remember that, Honorable Chair, there was an issue about the local content running out as a PC, the episodes that are there for things that we like to watch and we're spending most time at home. Two, was that if this happens and there is lockdown, you're going to have a problem that the actors are going to have a problem. What did we do? We engaged with the broadcasters, e-media, SAPC, as well as a party choice to say, what can we do to assist in this regard? Is it possible to enable the actors when the government reviews the level five? We met with them. They then asked that they go back because there are challenges that they might be facing about being accused. Sorry, DT. DT, um, switch off your camera. DM, switch off your camera. Proceed, DT. My camera is off, Honorable Chair. I'm saying uh, DM. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Go on, DT. Yeah. So we engaged with them. But also, um, I think the Honorable Chair had also approached us to say, there is this complaint, can the department do something? And then I had to make sure that as per the both appealed by the Honorable Chair, we engage with the broadcasters to deal with the matter, particularly for freelancers also, because it was not just actors, but also the freelancers. And we then got a response from uh, broadcasters, all of them, they submitted and indicated that while they would like to participate in the easing of the lockdown to enable the casting of the new or the shoot of the new episodes, uh, this will have to be taken into consideration when the issue of health protocols and regulations are being addressed. But we said we'll open the window for them to utilize that opportunity should they be able to do so. But we also then said others can follow the same example that at the time multi-choice had done of setting aside the 80 million to still support those who are involved in the, uh, in these uh, episodes or these soapies. So we have been doing those that work behind the scenes to try and address the plight of the actors. With the issue of the freelancers, we also had to deal with the film sector, particularly their federation, their organizations such as SASFEN, who and the NFVF, which is our entity, to look at what mechanisms. And there is a process that uh, 
NFVF, as we speak, are working on to see how they can support the freelancers, but also there is a process that they are using and said to them when after meeting uh, the film sector uh, organizations, as well as the CIFA organizations, that can they work on some mechanism for these measures. So it is not, but the freelancers, please note, honorable members, if you look at the criteria, they are included to also apply. Now, what will happen to the PSL games? The PSL games, I can just indicate that uh, Honorable Mamaburu, Minister did also yesterday pronounce that there has been engage between, engagement between him and the president of SAFA as a mother body for football, but also the engagement with the chairperson of PSL. And PSL has indicated that for them to bring a concrete proposal and how the mitigating measures will be put in place, uh, that they will be having a meeting of the Board of Governors on the 7th. Then Minister had indicated also that by then, we are hoping that they will be speaking in one voice between SAFA as well as PSL, so that government can deal with a proposal that addresses the football fraternity, not fragmentation. And that is a work that is being done. And we're hoping that once that then is done, it will be processed through the normal processes up until the COVID uh, command council of the president, where then eventual decision will be made if ever the submission requires that it goes to that level. But there are efforts to engage on this matter, but the department on its own can make that decision when the two bodies are speaking of different views, are having different views on the approach. Honorable Chair, there was nothing yeah. uh, on Honorable Mshongo's issue. Nothing was deliberate, neither to exclude nor to marginalize anybody. And I think that the Deputy Minister have uh, responded on these uh, questions. And we would like to assure honorable members, including Honorable Mshongo, that all we did was based on noble intention that the shorter the, the time of the disaster, the quicker the money or the relief reaches the people, the better. And that is still our principle. Hence, we also announced the increase in the size of the adjudication panel by 21 people so that we fast track this. There is no other deliberate intention, nor any malice for you to say, uh, maybe as a minister, I am giving you 150 million, but I want to withhold it uh, indirectly by making sure that you can apply. That would have been a self-defeating uh, effort. And we are not honorable members paying lip service. Intention is to make sure that there is alleviation or softening of the blow. Our effort only also needs to say to the honorable members, corruption is a reality, fraud land applications are a reality. In fact, as we analyze some of the information we're getting, you will find that people were submitting documents that might not be really authentic documents. So we are having to also protect what you will accuse us, honorable members, of being reckless when we give money to someone who is not a deserving beneficiary is not an athlete, is not a, a, a creative. So those were the measures put in place so that at the end of the day, we protect while we process this particular relief fund. Now, Jabin Mr. have spoken about double dipping and the role of the, of the provinces to try and see how we can also reach uh, they have explained that there were uh, 
people who are unintentionally being excluded by this project find mechanisms how we can deal with it, and we will do so. Um, at this stage, the intention is to conclude this process, have lessons learned, and improve from there. Uh, uh, there is no BEE criteria. I, I just want to emphasize this, uh, Honorable FND. There is no BEE criteria, but really to South you, Africa. Did yes. You? Yes. Uh, honorable members, uh, I'm, I'm uh, with exceeded, they're harassing me uh, that I must close the meeting. But the only, thank you so much, DM and DG. I would propose that uh, we need the list of paid artists that it must be forwarded to the uh, secretariat and they must forward it to us as a members. Also, the, the formula that you used, uh, it must be uh, forwarded to our secretaries and then they must forward that to us. So the time is 12.13 and, and the parliament is saying that uh, they've allowed us to exceed by this um, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that honorable members you have you have put all your 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 questions and suggestions. I'm hoping that uh, when the department is coming to us, also at the end of our meetings, they will share or they will um, email to our staff because this uh, thing of e funding it's an ongoing, as they are saying, and we have heard that the DM they are saying that still going to meet Minister and, and them. So let me take this opportunity to thank our department and thank our honorable members, especially those who are in rural areas that are not always having a nice uh, view to get, um, to get with us. Uh, I'm thanking you very much, everybody, has tried to contribute and ask questions. Um, thank you so much. Chair, Father. Thank you, Chair. We will forward all the information to the secretaries as requested. Thank you, Chair. Thank, 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 thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. No, the yeah, meeting well, is uh, closed. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> let's fight for our people. Uh, accordingly and will support our department if it needs to be that they ask further uh, location we are here as a committee i've heard that all of you, you Except are the meeting is closed especially the room yes thank you bye thank you bye thank you bye thank you bye chair thank you bye chair can i just bye bye, bye. 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 Meeting is closed. I was uh, closing the meeting. Can they just give the answers on paper which they did not answer? This is my only question. The department did not answer all the questions. Uh, and that they they, those questions, the they were going to forward. We have got a right to write to the department because we don't have enough time. We know all of uh, us uh, that it two hours. Uh, two uh, hours, nothing. Bye. Yes, Chair. Bye. Bye. Chair, please let them just reply okay. to our questions Hi. on paper. Uh, secretaries, take these honorable members out of this um, <laughs> Microsoft. Uh, they know uh, how to deal with the remaining and remainder of questions. As I was saying that some of those questions I've just myself pointed out, and we need that they, you must uh, respond to EEE Secretary. Goodbye. Have a, a, a nice day.
I'm using the laptop. <laughs> 